for the surface noise demo, we're going to start out simple. Uh, let's just grab a PolyMesh 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode. I'm going to hit W, go into the gear icon. I'm going to choose a polycube, which if I turn on polyframe, you can see very nice, evenly distributed geometry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say control D a bunch of times, maybe get up to, you know, a million and a half polygons here. And let's go into our brush menu, which I have docked over on the left. And we're going to go down here to surface and you're going to see there's surface noise that you can attach to your brush. So you know, here's here's some basic surface noise. I'm going to crank that strength up a little bit, turn that noise scale way up. There we go, a little bit of strength, noise scale way up. And then again, you can go through here and you can change your curve to get whatever look you're going for. You can hit OK. And then when you brush, you're going to get surface noise. And the cool thing about this is it's a 3D projection. So no matter what, it's always going to look like, you know, it's it's tiling on your mesh. Of course, you can hold down Alt and dig in if you want to. So pretty much expected, uh, you know, expected results here. Now, if we go in here to noise and then edit and say you want to bring in uh, custom alpha, you can just click on this alpha on and off. Uh, you can navigate. So, you know, C program files, Pixelogic, Zebra 2021, Z alphas, you can drop them in there. Uh, I think I downloaded these from Pixelogic's uh, download website. So I'm going to double click this tiled small rocks here. And now I have I have a noise and I have an alpha scale. So uh, if I go, and this is my alpha. So I can take my alpha scale and I can scale this down a little bit. Again, I can go in here to my strength so I can see it. Uh, and you can mix. So here's mixed basic noise. If you just want to have base, uh, your, your basic noise, which is the noise we had first, you can make it just that. Or you can go down here to none of it. Or if you can kind of mix between them a little bit here and you can choose, you know, multiply, diffuse, or um, difference, min, max, all that stuff. So, you know, dial in whatever setting you want. And you can even go in here and you can change, you know, these curves. You know, go here and you kind of adjust these curves. Again, just to dial in that exact look you want. Now, the problem with this is if we go to the sides, you're going to see my alpha, those those rocks here, that's a planar projection. It's projecting on this face okay, but it's not projecting on these faces uh, very well. So if we hit okay, and we go through here and we start brushing with our standard brush with noise turned on, it's going to have the effect you're probably expecting. It's going to be great on the front plane. And then as soon as we go to the side, our regular noise is tiling OK. Uh, but this rocky noise is just doing a planar projection down the side. Now, if this is cool and that's a look you're going for, great. Uh, but probably it's not. So what we can do now is under surface noise, we now have local projection mode. So if I turn that on, you're going to see that's going to enable dynamic scale and give us a base scale at the same side, same time. So what this is basically telling it is use my sample the normal underneath my brush when I go to stroke and use that as my projection uh, angle. And then if I go over here to this side, it'll use this normal. And again, when I say face normal, I mean, think of a little string poking out from every single face on this object. So when you click on that face, it's going to set that as your normal or your projection angle, and then it's going to project just fine. Now, if I start, let's go ahead and undo these here. If I start projecting over here and then I don't let up and go to the side, again, you're gonna get that um, planar projection. So you need to project from the side, pick your brush up, then project from this side, pick your brush up, and just keep resampling your normal. Now you may notice, if you have a very small brush size, I'm tapping S on my keyboard and we're dropping down in our brush size here. I can, you know, I have a small brush size and it's very uh, small rocks. And if I press harder, it's going to get larger rocks. So you can not only can you use Z intensity to indicate or dictate how small your tiling alpha is, but also your brush, uh, your pressure sensitivity uh, will also dictate that. If you don't like that, you can go over here and you can say, okay, I want local projection mode, but I don't want dynamic scale. So you can turn that off. Now, interestingly, your base scale over here is still activated. So it's a base scale of five. So if I go in here and start brushing, it's gonna be very, very large. Uh, so basically, if I turn this down to one, that's gonna be the original noise. If I go in here to edit, this is the scale I have locked in. So with a base scale of one, I can go through here and you know, that's what I'm getting. Now, if I wanted to make this smaller, I don't have to go, I mean, I can, I can go in here to noise edit and I can uh, change this alpha scale down if I want to. However, with this new base scale, all I have to do is go, you know what, that's too large. Let's dial in 0.5. Now it's smaller. So I don't even have to go in and edit my noise anymore. All I got to do is dial in that base scale to make it bigger, smaller. Uh, and then I also have local projection. So I can still go in here and project with my brush based on that surface normal that I pick up initially with my brush stroke. 
course, if you do want dynamic scale, of course you can turn that on. Uh, we can even over crank this. So instead of one, we'll double it. And now, you know, even with a small brush, it might be a larger rock size. And remember, you can hold that alt and you can dig in. You can go in and change your base scale. We'll crank that up to three. And you see the default is bigger. And then when I press down harder, it's going to be larger. And on my, when I make my brush size larger, it's also going to uh, affect how large that alpha is. And if we undo those, uh, just remember you can go in here and we'll go ahead and turn off dynamic scale. We'll put this back down to one. If I go in here to edit, you don't even have to use one of these alphas. You can turn that off. And again, you can use just that noise strength in here. You can also go in here to noise plug and that'll pop up noise maker. And let's say, you know, we want to do snake skin. So we'll hit okay. And now we have a plugin scale so we can make this and we'll go ahead and crank up that strength. And we're going to, you know what, for this one, I'm going to say mix basic noise down to zero. I just want my plug-in noise. So here we can dial in some snake skin. I can go in here and tell it how strong I want that effect to be. Let's go ahead and reset our curve here. So I'm happy with this. I can hit OK. I can go in here and I can brush on snake skin. However, just like the other noises, it's going to, you know, have that planar projection. But with local projection mode turned on, I can brush on snake skin, pick my brush up, brush on snake skin, and I can have it locally projected onto those surfaces. And if I want smaller, again, I can use my dynamic scale for my brush size, or I can literally go in here and say, you know what, again, we'll do a 0.5, and now a little less snake skin, or a little smaller snake skin, I should say. And just, and just to kind of push home the idea of, you know, selecting the surface normal, I'm going to go through here and I'll clip curve this side down. And when you use a clip, it just takes that geometry, you know, past this graded, gradient, gradient line and just pulls it back in that direction. So again, this, this geometry is just pushed in that direction, but now we have a very obvious surface normal here. But again, we can still go through and we can brush on here. We can pick up our pen and we can brush on here. We can pick up our pen and brush on here. And, uh, and when it's a shallower angle, you can brush across those and it you know it can still probably work good enough maybe it kind of depends on the angle of the situation here so in this instance going from here to here it's going to do a planar projection but if you do it on a shallower angle uh, it may work out a little bit more in your favor so you can kind of feel out now going from here to here it didn't because this angle change is going from this flat to that flat but going from this angle which is this to this you know that kind of worked and this will kind of work but this to this will work until it hits here and then this angle change that you initially sampled is too different from this one so that turns it into that planar projection that we were talking about and you'll have to forgive me i should have mentioned this there is going to be a brush set up for this so we've gone through all the settings but you can just go to b p pattern uh, there's pattern 01 and pattern 02 so you can select pattern 01 and you see it's already set up with the surface noise turned on local projection mode you can go in here and you can edit the noise if you'd like to so here you're getting a very cool pattern and then also BP pattern 02. And this is more, again, go in here to edit. And now that you know how these functions work, you can go through and make any modifications, change your base scale, all that good stuff. So there's going to be some built-in pattern brushes uh, for you to use with local projection mode turned on. And there are a few settings in these brushes I should talk about. So for example, uh, in pattern 02, it's going to be, if I hover over this, you can see the base type is standard. And if you want to keep it uh, from like going over and doing this planar projection, you can combat that a little bit by with these brushes going in here, turning on back face masking. So here is our uh, brush settings. We can go down here to auto masking, turn on back face masking. And by default, I think the curve is going to look like this. You can kind of crunch this down a little bit. And then when you go and you start brushing on, it'll kind of stop at the edge there. Uh, but you're going to see, because the base type is standard, when I go on brush, it's going to kind of continuously build up, which might not be a bad thing. You know, it's kind of nice to get a nice undulating surface on here. And like I said before, I have dynamic scale turned off, but I'm still able to go in here and turn uh, change the brush, the base scale. Another thing I can do is if I want to do really fine-tuned uh, scaling, I can tap on this and then up here there's a little orange uh, kind of a semi-transparent orange slider up at the top so I can actually do smaller numbers up here so we'll take this down like maybe 0.4 then I'll do 0.4 up here and again it's going to kind of stop at that edge and it's going to have that ice undulating surface and then over here we'll uh, put this back up oops uh, again that that top one there uh, where are we at 0.9 we'll do like 1.07 
a little bit larger over here. So uh, just to get a couple uh, different types. So now let's talk about uh, brush pattern 01. If I choose, the, if I hover over this one, you're gonna see it's on single layer. Uh, same deal, I can turn on back face masking for this, change the curve to keep it on this one side. However, you're gonna see no matter how much I brush, it just stays the same height. And of course, same thing if I hold down Alt, it'll like cut in, uh, but it's all gonna stay on one layer because again, this is a single layer brush type. So depending on the brush you start with when you start building, making your brush, if you do clay brush or clay buildup or the layer brush, all of those brush types are gonna dictate how your brush behaves uh, in addition to your ability to change things on the fly with your surface noise and your local orientation. So again, same deal with this one. I turned off dynamic scale. I can go ahead and say, you know, let's go up to 10. This will be really uh, large. And then I go down here, uh, change my base scale down to like maybe 1.13. Give very, uh, a lot of tiling on this side here. So you have, uh, you know, a fair amount of control. Uh, again, keeping in mind back face masking and your brush type.